a very warm welcome so we solve today quants yes start solving okay let's solve an investor deposits 5000 dollar into an account with a stated interest rate of 10% the bank will compound interest using annual compounding for the first year and continuous compounding thereafter if all interest is reinvested and there are no withdrawals from the account the number of years needed for the account to grow from 5000 dollar to 10000 dollar is closest to okay so for the first year it is compound interest and annual compounding so 5000 at 10% for first year becomes 5500 yes and thereafter this 5500 is compounded at continuous compounding and it grows to 10000 now if you remember the continuously compounded rate if you want to find out ending value is equal to beginning value into exponential to the function rt where r stands for rate of interest t stands for the time period ending value is how much 10000 10000 beginning value is how much 50 500 don't consider 5000 5500 because we are only seeing for continuous compounding right now so 5500 beginning value into exponential to the power r we don't we know yeah we know 10% is r and always consider this in decimals t we don't know we don't know t okay so now little algebraic rearrangement 10000 divide by 5500 Is equal to e to the power point n t, right? Okay. Now let me rearrange a little. E to the power zero point n t is equal to how much is the value of hundred divided by fifty five? Just tell me quickly. One point eight one. Okay. So now, using the rule of log, point ten t is equal to log of one point eight one. Log of one point eight one is how much? Point five nine seven. Point five nine seven. So point one t is equal to point five nine seven. Therefore, t is equal to how much? T is equal to five point. Nine seven, which is roughly six years. Six years of continuous compounding, one year of annual normal compounding. So total is seven years. Option B. Clear. For this, you have to know the continuous compounding concept, the relation between beginning and ending value. Okay, given by this relation. Okay. first year of normal compounding no one year it got compounded at 10% using annual compounding so 5.9 plus 6.97 plus 1 6.97 so roughly 7 years fine any doubt in this question second question now having read the entire question they are asking what time weighted rate of return time weighted rate of return is what a simple geometric average calculation but for me to calculate geometric mean over 2 years i need the respective year returns so first our endeavor would be to check the returns from 0 to first year okay so what was your investment at time 0 100 okay so that is my investment of 100 in the denominator that 100 rupees grows to how much at the end of year when the stock grows to 105 and additionally is it giving any dividend the stock paid a dividend of 10 dollar at the end of year 1 so 10 dollar dividend so my 100 rupees investment grows to 115 5 rupees is the capital appreciation 10 is the realized gain of dividend so 15% is my return my 100 rupee investment Became hundred and fifteen, so it is fifteen percent return. 
so that I have got for year one. Now my endeavor would be to check the percentage returns from year one to year two, and this is where it gets interesting. At the end of year one, you are buying one more stock. That stock is priced at hundred and five. Okay, so now what happens is, at the end of first year, your invest. Ask yourself a question: How much is the investment at stake? Hundred and five. You are investing in one more stock. and the existing stock also is priced at 105 not only that the dividends which you received at the end of first year you are reinvesting that also which is how much then so how much of your money is invested currently 220 is currently invested it's currently invested 220 now let's check what is the value at the end of year 2 each stock is sold for 115 so 115 into 2 is 230 is the value of your investment and additionally at the end of year two dividends received is 20 so your 220 investment becomes 250 how much percentage appreciation from 220 to 250 13.63% 13 13.63% that's all this is what i wanted the two returns in percentage terms now it is not difficult to calculate the geometric average geometric average will be 1.15 into 1.1363 and square root of that and don't forget to do minus 1 into 100 removing the principal effect and then converting back to percentages so into 100 so answer comes to option b 14.32 Yes, it's clearly mentioned the dividend at the end of year one was reinvested in the portfolio. Yeah, yeah, whatever you stock you had already, that too you are again, it's like reinvested. Okay, you are not selling it. I hope you understood this. How to do it? Consider each year in isolation and accordingly do it. Okay. Okay. Do this. They have asked you at what price is the share sold at the end of year one, guys? What is holding period return? Holding period return is your ending value of the share plus dividend, if any, upon beginning value. Minus one into hundred, right? Okay. Holding period return is how much? Negative ten point two. Please be very careful of the signs. Okay. Ending value we don't know. We have to find that out. Okay. Dividend is how much? Two. Two is the dividend. Beginning value is how much? Four fifty. Minus one into hundred. This in two hundred, I'll get it here and divide it by hundred. Is that okay? I'll divide this by hundred, and this minus one, I'll get it over here and do it plus one. So just solve for this much at least. How much is it? Point eight nine eight left hand side. Okay. Point eight nine eight is equal to x plus two upon. 450. So 450 into 0.898 is how much? 404.1. 404.1. So how much is x? 402.1. So closest is option A. That 404 which you are getting is a total of ending value of the stock plus the dividend. They have just asked you the ending value of the stock. I hope it's clear now. Okay. None of you all give me the right answer. Okay. So right answer is option C. Now let's see how to do it. They are talking about wider prediction interval. Prediction interval means what? Confidence interval. 
इट विल हैव टू बाउंड अपर बाउंड लोअर बाउंड लोअर बाउंड विल बी पॉइंट एस्टिमेट दैट इज द मीन पॉइंट एस्टिमेट मीन्स द मीन माइनस स्टैंडर्ड एरर ऑफ फोरकास्ट स्टैंडर्ड एरर ऑफ फोरकास्ट इन टू रिलायबिलिटी फैक्टर रिलायबिलिटी फैक्टर इज अ फैंसी नेम फॉर क्रिटिकल वैल्यू दैट्स वाई एम मेकिंग यू फमिलियर विथ ऑल दीज टर्म्स रिलायबिलिटी फैक्टर इज क्रिटिकल वैल्यू नाउ ऑप्शन ए इफ यू सी सैम्पल साइज higher the sample size standard error of forecast will be less higher the sample size because that is in the formula if you remember that standard error of sample mean formula not standard error of forecast standard error of sample mean i am talking about population standard deviation divided by under root n this was the formula as you increase sample size or denominator increases so standard error as a whole will fall so increase in sample size will lead to standard error falling and if the standard error falls the prediction interval will be narrower not wider make sense so a cannot be the answer now an increase in level of significance guys tell me one thing at 90% confidence interval what is the level of significance 10% is the level of significance 10% level of significance is denoted by alpha at 95% confidence interval level of significance is how much 5% at 99% confidence interval level of significance is 1% now tell me the critical value for 90% 1.65 and 95% 2.58 now an increase in level of significance this is the highest level of significance at highest level of significance your critical value is the lowest now here again reliability factor will reduce if you take higher level of significance which will lead to a narrower confidence interval so what should be the answer option c standard error of estimate if the standard error of estimate is high the prediction interval will be wider okay clear fine proceed okay now let's understand how to solve such questions negative skew you remember the concept of skewness in negative skew mean is less than median and median is less than mode and why is mean negative because of outliers outliers mean negative means losses or gains losses few extreme losses extreme matlab outliers so few extreme losses and frequent small gains frequent small gains frequent small gains if i take the average of all it will be what zero and a mean of zero it cancels out each other right average becomes zero i hope you understood now mode is what mode is the highest occurring value that value which occurs maximum number of times and these gains occurring maximum number of times so mode will be the highest of all and mean will be the lowest of all i hope you understood so option a should be the answer frequent small gains and a few extreme losses okay fine bell curve if you want to see it's like this it will be plotted on a graph like this more skewed towards the left and why these are extreme values which is pulling the curve on the left okay any doubts sure your skewness will be what negative skewness means skewness will be less than 0 and when skewness is less than 0 this holds true mm -hmm. 
losses see why is mean the lowest of all mean median mode because of few extreme losses losses means what negative that is why the mean is being pulled towards the left right okay proceed now see there are gains but the effect of gains is offset by these extreme losses so if you take on an average it will be zero average is zero mean is zero but then if you see mode highest occurring highest occurring value means the value which occurs most number of times that is why mode is the highest clear